Hi guys, it's Panio and welcome to today's video and welcome to another WWE reaction. This video was recommended by I am Mu Imran and he said please react to Drew McIntyre's story and this is such a perfect video for me to do now. I did find Chosen One the Drew McIntyre story full career documentary by Wrestle with Andy. Um <coughs> If you want to check out the original video you can always go and check it out there but if you want to check out my reaction stick around i'm sorry i'm still a bit sick it will take me some time to recover but i cannot miss on videos i missed one day and i feel so bad about it but watching drew mcintyre's career and learning a bit more about him is actually really crucial and important at this time because he is in the center like not really cody level center but kind of there right now and very important for wrestlemania and other events as well so i am interested in learning more about him i think he's a cool guy i think he is very capable physically to do enormous things i think he has charisma beautiful accent and just a beautiful man overall you know i just don't like how conflicting his story is and his character in the way that i feel like he's hypocritical in so many things he does he says one thing then he proves with action a different thing and i'm a person that don't listen to word i just see by action what you do and i judge on that like you can tell me whatever you want but let me see it. All right, let me see you do it. So let's go and check out this video. Drew McIntyre has had one of the most inspirational journeys to the top <laughs> in wrestling history. Yes, from working on the UK Indies to his first run in WWE, where things never belongs in Outlander, plan, <laughs> then leaving the company and making a name for himself, all the way to his glorious return to WWE and capturing the big one on the grandest stage of them all. Yee. But how did it all happen? Well, join that us him? today as we take a deep dive into his entire career journey oh so far. Oh my God! Look at him! Look at him! Look at him! Drew McIntyre story. <laughs> oh my God! The beard made so Andrew much McLean change. Galloway was born in Air Scotland on June 6, 1985, and it was while growing up there and studying at the nearby Prestwick Academy that he would discover his two great passions in life: pro wrestling and soccer. For the latter, then, oh, this meant a lifelong love affair with Glasgow Rangers, one of the top two teams in the country, and for the former, well, this would see him dive deep into the world of WWF, with his favorite performer at the time being Brett Hitman. Oh, Hart. yeah. But despite considering following a career path in the world of soccer, it would ultimately be wrestling that won his heart. As in 2001, when he was still just 15 years old, Andrew would start training in the ring at the Frontier Wrestling Alliance after his family had relocated to Portsmouth, England. From there, once he learned the ropes, he'd make his in-ring debut in 2003 when he journeyed back up to Scotland to perform for the local Glasgow promotion British Championship Wrestling, at which point he developed the gimmick of THE Drew Galloway, a cocky narcissist who knew he was better than everyone else around him. I mean, uh, if not, this is how you look like when you are 15 years old, of course you're gonna be cocky. Like, this doesn't look like a child. What is going on? Sometimes genetics treats you differently, all right? Like, sometimes genetics are in your favor. But there was certainly a lot of truth to the idea as, at six foot five and 265 pounds, <laughs> Drew quickly stood out amongst his peers yeah. as one to keep an eye on. Duh. And this would see local promoters usually handpick him as the one to go up against any of the more established American stars, such as the Honky Tonk Man, Marty Jannetty, or D'Lo Brown, that they'd brought in for a one-shot, arguing that if anyone was going to reflect the local Scottish scene the best, then it would be yeah, the young up-and-comer from it Air. So with his reputation growing fast, Calloway would finish up his degree in criminology at Glasgow Caledonian University, then journey over to Irish Whip Wrestling, where he would first come into contact with Seamus O'Shaughnessy, oh starting God, a lengthy perfect. feud with him at this point that would, Irish during its early Scottish. days, play up to the historic Catholic-Protestant rivalry found in both Ireland and Scotland. Yeah. And this feud, as it happened, would ultimately end up carrying over until the present day period after both men had signed with WWE. Of course, neither of them knew this at the time, as both were still trying to catch their big break, the next step towards which, for Drew, would see him become BCW World Champion for a second time in 2007, from there going on to successfully defend against the likes of Marin Stone, Alan Grogan, and Lionheart in the months that followed. After that, he'd add more gold to his collection when he became both the IWW International Heavyweight Champion, beating his rival Sheamus for this honor, then the insane championship wrestling heavyweight champion back in his home country too. 
Ultimately, though, the Scotsman would have to vacate all of these belts by the end of the year as, after coming to the attention of WWE in the autumn, he would get signed up to a developmental contract with them, oh. requiring him to relocate to the United States as, oh. by the October 12th episode of SmackDown, he'd have made Ye his debut on SmackDown under the new name of Drew McIntyre. Wait, but Following I, this, I forgot, he'd make some further appearances name, on Raw and Heat, but for is the time being, these name? would remain cameos, as for the most part, the his rookie beard. would be spending his time in both Ohio Valley Wrestling <clears throat> and Florida Championship Wrestling, okay. there learning the WWE in-house style as he teamed with Stu Bennett to briefly become the How FCW he, Tag Team Champions. As well as that, it oh, would be during this period that Drew would become engaged to fellow oh. wrestler Terrence. Oh, wait, Terrell. let me connect the dots. Moved to America and then got immediately married. I, I think it's a visa issue here, brother. <laughs> Especially that you are in developmental section, so not like a full-time career thing in WWE to get like a job visa. But that's what I think. I don't know. I don't know if that's how it's work in America with them ending up officially tying the knot a year later. And by now, the Scotsman would have been moved up to the main roster full-time too, as an exclusive member of the Blue Brand, he'd establish himself also, as joking, a big-time heel when sure. Vince McMahon personally gave him an on-screen rub by introducing him as a future world champion and his own chosen one. This, though, ended up proving to be a heavy weight on McIntyre's shoulders as, despite having all the talent in the world, mm -hmm. the expectations were now great, and as such, yeah. everyone would be watching to see if he slipped up. Not that he did that initially, though. No, early on during his main roster run, in fact, the Air Native would find a lot of success, as after feuding with the likes of R-Truth and Finley, he ended up going against then-Intercontinental Champion John Morrison. And when those two finally met in the ring at December 13th, 2009's Tables, Ladders, and Chairs pay-per-view, it would be the newcomer who picked up the win, starting his first reign with the secondary strap. After that, he'd go on a string of successful defenses against the likes of Kane and Matt Hardy in the months that followed, all while Vince McMahon continued to be an advocate of his both on and off screen. Yeah. Yes, it seemed like it was only a matter of time until he reached the top of the mountain in WWE, Unfortunately, though, before he could get there, he would first have to lose his Intercontinental title to Kofi Kingston at May 23, 2010's Over the Limit, a loss which sent him spiraling. And to make mm. matters worse, come June of that year, after the boss had been written off of TV following a kayfabe Yay. attack from the Nexus, he <laughs> would find that he'd lost all his power, Art. and so, upon getting beaten by Matt Hardy, yeah. he'd be informed by then SmackDown Honestly, general manager. Honestly, every time like you are very connected with the boss... Uh, it's not good because the rest there's a lot of people who don't like their chefs their bosses you know like they it, 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 in the company there will be a lot of deflection a lot of offense a lot of defense you know like it's not easy teddy long that his work visa had expired and that he'd have to return to scotland but he's married though wait what do you mean what do you mean <laughs> well i don't get it i thought like if you are married like the spouse if she's unless she's not american though yeah it makes sense if she doesn't have her own um nationality then it would be hard plus like you need uh in um, at least like in germany you need five years of work and then you can apply for a, uh you can even apply for a nationality if you want but like you can apply for a permanent type of visa so you don't have to renew it every year and stuff like that so yeah <clears throat> i don't know this was true, as over the next couple of weeks, the Scotsman would have to apply for a new visa, one yeah. which allowed him to return to the U.S. soon thereafter, so okay. as to form a new alliance with Cody oh, Rhodes. Oh, Cody! Oh, and they were this alliance would turn out to be Ooh, so... Oh, okay, this is actually really important in the timeline, because uh, there were moments during now Drew McIntyre interacting with Cody where he would mention stuff in the back, like stuff back in the day, how much he cared about him and stuff, and also he would... Uh, tell him that he needs to finish his story and he needs to do this. But then again, he goes and does something else, you know, like he's like, oh, honor, this and that. And then he, he snakes himself out of situations. So I, I don't know. It was successful that at September 19th, Night of Champions pay-per-view, they think would they be would four other perfectly. duos to become the new WWE Tag Team Tag Champions. Team. Yeah. Following that, they'd hold on to the belts for the next month, successfully defending them up until the point where they were finally bested by John Cena and David Otunga. But now, with no more gold around their waists, the two would end up going their separate ways once more, as McIntyre instead began focusing on re-establishing himself as a single star. 
and this determination would follow him when he was drafted mm. over to Raw in April of 2011, even if it appeared that, by then, Vince McMahon had moved on to his new flavor of the month. So instead of being treated like the world title contender fans had expected him to be, Drew would mill around in the lower mid-card for a while, rarely hey. getting a chance to appear on Raw at all as he'd become mostly relegated to dark matches and superstars tapings. Then, after suffering a shoulder injury in the spring of 2012, he'd be removed from TV altogether for a while, returning Oi. in May only to continue picking up where he left off, being stuck in the undercard and rarely getting any wins. So when he finally got a chance to form a stable soon after this, he jumped at the opportunity, feeling that it was finally something to sink his teeth into. Sure, it was a trio of comedy jobbers known as 3MB, one whose ranks also Dude, included this looks Heath like Slater and Jinder come Mahal, uh, but at least it was TV time. <laughs> That said, it remained a far cry from where he originally saw his career going, and it's not hard to see why he felt this way, yeah. as it really wouldn't have taken much to make him feel like a main eventer given his stature Ooh. and charisma. In the end, though, it appears that Drew was his own worst enemy during this period, something he's since admitted to Wait. as a messy divorce he was undergoing with his oh, wife at this no. point would see allegations of abuse be thrown back and forth. Why which... is this always happening? I really... Is there, is there one wrestler out there one wrestler out there that I can fully respect that knows he never abused his wife or any other women in his life? Like, why these big masculine guys have that need to prove that they are strong physically against a woman? That is so shameful and disrespectful. I'm mad. I am furious. Evidently soured him in the eyes of management. Oh, so yeah, in my eyes, role, too. Then, he would continue on the best he could. <laughs> Spending the next couple of years after that getting involved in six man tags against the likes of The Miz, Alberto Del Rio, and Tommy Dreamer. Unfortunately, though, by June of 2014, the Holy. act would have run its course and Drew would Holy find me. himself being released from his WWE <laughs> contract, leading oh, okay. to him returning to Scotland from there, where, now once again performing oh, for ICW, he'd make it his aim to put British wrestling on the map in a oh, way that it had. Oh, brother! We are going downhill now! See? See what happened? And put your hand on a woman again, let me see you! Especially nowadays! Not been before. This is what happened. The first step in this, as but he's it not happened, giving up. was defeating cool. Jester at the company's Fear and Loathing 7 show that November to become the two-time ICW Heavyweight Champion, with the Scotsman then following this up by taking the belt around Europe as he defended it in places like Denmark, Australia, and Ireland. And while he was doing this, he was also continuing to work stateside for promotions like Evolve, he didn't with give this up. one allowing him to defeat Chris okay. Hero so as to become the Evolve World Champion in August of 2014, and then go on a string of successful defenses against the likes of Tony Nese, Ricochet, and Rich Swan in the months that followed. Following that, the former Intercontinental Champion would add another feather Ga to his Ga cap when Ga in 2015, he beat Johnny Gargano to unify the Evolve title. I g -g -g <laughs> I just have difficulty pronouncing his name, okay? Gargano. Origano. Yes, that I will call him Origano from now. And the Dragon Gate USA opened the Freedom Gate Championship. <laughs> with him then going on to defend Origano. both belts simultaneously. <laughs> but that wasn't all he was doing at this point as he'd also make his debut with Total Nonstop Action Wrestling in January of that same year at a taping in Glasgow. There, coming to the aid of his fellow countryman, Grado, all never before gave picking up, 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 up a quick victory oh. over Kenny King. After that, he would return stateside with them, forming a stable known as The mm. Rising, which also included Eli Drake and Micah, and allowed the Scotsman to establish himself as one of the top players in TNA. Meanwhile, though, back in Scotland, he continued to reign as the ICW World Heavyweight Champion, with him by then having racked up 24 title defenses against names like Tommy End, Big Demo, and Rhino. And of course, nothing lasts forever, and so, at Fear and Loathing 8 on November 15th of that he year, he would finally be beaten by Grado. Oh. And to make matters worse, by that point, he'd also lost his Evolve and Dragon Gate USA world oh. titles to Timothy Thatcher, now we're down, the down. native to recalibrate as he now set his sights on winning TNA's top prize, something okay. he was ultimately able to do on the March 15th, 2016 episode of Impact when he pinned Matt Hardy to start his first reign like as the their music world in the background, heavyweight champion. Cheerful. 
After that, now reinvigorated yeah, once more, he back. pick up more gold when he and Johnny Gargano were able to win the Evolve Tag Team titles Johnny, together. Johnny. All this while back over in the UK, he'd become the What Culture Pro Wrestling Champion after beating Joseph Connors See, and this Joe is the thing. If a company doesn't believe in you and, like, dishes you out or kicks you out or whatever, it's not the end. You can still continue to prove yourself elsewhere, and then when they see potential again, they might call you back, which happened. He's back somehow. Sometime. In a three-way cage match. And as if that wasn't enough, in his Ooh, personal life, he'd be getting married for the second time around this Oh, point. he loves getting this married. Time to Dr. Okay. Caitlin Let's Frohenop. hope this lasted. Back in the ring, however, there was little time for celebration as, while in Evolve, Drew had now started feuding with his now former tag partner, Johnny Gargano. Over in TNA, he'd oh, be fending off challengers each other. such as okay. Jeff Hardy and Bobby Lashley. Bobby, yeah, that's, that's hard to win. the latter who was ultimately <sighs> able to dethrone him as Basically, TNA World Champion okay. at June 12th, 2016's <laughs> Slammiversary. This <laughs> didn't get him down for too long, though, because back in Evolve, he would become a two-time tag team champion when he partnered with Chuck Taylor to defeat Catchpoint for the honor at Evolve 64. Okay. Meanwhile, as he was doing this, Drew was popping up in Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, further establishing himself as one of the hottest indie talents out there when he had bangers against indie the likes of Tommaso Ciampa, Roderick Strong, Trent Beretta, Trevor Lee, and Michael Elgin. How and can this he be would indie? all eventually bring him to the attention of WWE once more, I as told in early you. 2017, after mm. he'd had one more run in TNA Listen as the Impact Bonnie. Grand Champion, she the Scottish things. Warrior would re-sign with his former employer, from there, making his re-debut by appearing in the crowd at TakeOver Orlando on April 1st of that year. <clears throat> okay. And perhaps learning from the mistakes during his last run then, WWE would be quick to fast-track Drew up to the main event scene of the black and gold brand after yeah. that, having him defeat <laughs> Killian <laughs> Dane on July 18th to become number one contender to Bobby Roode's NXT Championship. Then, when the time for that match came on August 19th's TakeOver Brooklyn 3, it would be the Scotsman who picked up the win after 22 minutes and 25 seconds, securing his spot as a major player to be in Vince McMahon's promotion. And in the weeks that followed this, he'd prove he deserved the position by racking up defenses against the likes of Roderick Strong and Adam Cole, all before eventually losing the title to Andrade Cien Almas at TakeOver War Games on November 18th. But the reason for this loss wasn't that the company had lost faith in him this time. No, quite the opposite, in fact, as following the match, Drew would take some time off to recover from a bicep injury, oh, only to yeah, then reappear can... on the main roster in April of 2018. If the company is not against you, then your body injuries can be against you with your career. Like, anything can happen. Time member of Raw. What fans may not have expected, though, was that upon ah. arriving on the Red Brand, Drew would Ziggler. instantly turn heel and align himself with Dolph Ziggler, beginning a feud with Titus Worldwide after that, which saw the villains make short work of their opponents. I think it, it, then, it, once that was over and done you. with, the Scottish Warrior would help his new partner win the Intercontinental title on the June 18th episode of Raw, with people now beginning to compare the dynamic the duo had to that of Shawn Michaels and Diesel in the mid-90s. Oh, they actually and this do look alike, though. so well that come the September 3rd episode work. of Raw, they'd have beaten Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel to become the Raw <laughs> Tag Team Champions. It All works. this while forging a temporary alliance Yo, with Braun Strowman. Strowman, all... okay, thank you so much. I, like, it's... Like, I'm trying to pronounce his name. There were some videos where I was reacting like a couple of days ago. I don't know if you noticed on my on my YouTube channel where I saw Strowman on the screen. I thought, I thought it was Bray Wyatt. And I was like, Bray, wait, 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 that's not Bray Wyatt. What, what's his name? Is that Big Show? No, that's not Big Show. And I'm like trying to remember his name. And I couldn't for the love of me. Like, there are so many of them, you guys. There's so many wrestlers. It's very hard for me. I'm still learning. Uh, but finally, Strowman. And it's not a difficult name. Strawman. Straw like, straw like. No, it's S-T-R. I don't even know how to S-T-R-E-W. I think that's how it is. Yeah. I call him Strong Man, okay? Strong Man and Oregano. Three had found a common enemy in the shield. Honey, that's not how you're going to learn their names. wouldn't last long, however, as on the October 22nd episode of Raw, the monster among men would cost McIntyre and Ziggler their tag team titles. Blah! And soon after this, the Scotsman would end his alliance with Dolph, too, claiming then that he'd only been using his partner to help him get back to the top and that, now that they were no longer tag champions, he had no further use for him. See? So now See? a single star once more, Drew would feud with his now former Ooh, me, me. partner for a while, eventually beating him in a steel cage match on the December the 31st episode match all of match all over Raw. again. After that, he'd go on a tear through the singles division, picking up wins against the likes of Dean Ambrose oh. and Seth Rollins, all on the, the way to a big-time WrestleMania 35 match happen? against Did Roman Reigns. Did this happen? Did this happen? Oh! 
what he is happening? He was falling like a domino when the time ah. for the match came on April 7th, 2019. Oh, he got destroyed. <laughs> but that wasn't the end of his beef with Reigns Whoa. as it happened because following WrestleMania, Seriously? the former tag team champion would align himself with Shane McMahon as the oh two continued to make God. the big dog's life a living hell. Get out. So needing to even the odds then, Roman would enlist the help of The Undertaker, with all four men from there clashing in a tag team match at July 14th's Extreme Rules. And despite losing that night, this bout would give Drew the distinction. Oh, of this is a loss. This is a loss. You see Undertaker on one side, like, nah, don't even. Why even try? His last ever in ring contest to date, something he would use to propel himself forward from there, as after taking a brief hiatus in the summer, he'd return in 2019 to start something of a win streak. A win streak that even saw fans start to get behind him once okay. more. So with this growing fan support, the Ayrshire boy would enter the 2020 nice. Royal Rumble fully confident that he had what it took to win the whole thing. And boy, did he show everyone watching he meant business when, around the halfway mark of the match, he'd eliminate the beast himself, Brock Lesnar, the very same man who had utterly dominated the yeah. proceedings up until then. Yeah. After that, Not he would eliminate though. everyone else Dad. in his path, eventually winning Hopefully the whole thing him to book himself a spot in the main event of WrestleMania Unless 36. It's true. You know what I mean. Unfortunately, though, any hopes he may have had about having his big crowning moment take place in front of thousands of adoring fans at the showcase of the Immortals would be dashed when, just weeks prior to WrestleMania that March, the world would go into shutdown. Oh, Corona? So instead of getting to face the then e WWE champion Brock Lesnar inside of a so packed bad. stadium, the whole thing would instead take no place one, in no an audience. empty performance Just center. Flies somewhat mosquitoes dampening around. the moment when Drew finally slayed the beast after six minutes and 55 seconds. Six to win minutes, bro. Like, just finish. Like, just end it, you know? It's so bad that they didn't have any audience. Like, hear me out. It would be so awesome if they went on Zoom and have, like, the audience react live while having them on screens all around. Like, in my opinion, that would be such a good idea to do because without the audience, this is nothing. I remember I watched football when Corona was, I think, soccer, okay, for Americans out there. I watched soccer, uh, European soccer, and um, there were no audience and it was so bad, you guys. I was like, I'm never watching soccer again unless there is audience because without the audience without the fans it's like it drops drastically like the environment is completely different title for the first time still even if the situation wasn't perfect he was now the wwe champion and so wanting to prove he deserved the spot the scotsman would push like forward he doing everything up. he this could to represent the company during one of the world's darkest periods in recent memory and this would mean giving fans who were stuck at home something they could look forward to every Monday night as following his big title win, Drew would go on a string of successful defenses against the likes of The Big Show, Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, Dolph Ziggler, and Randy Orton, the latter of whom he would defeat oh, twice, they had first that, in a singles they match had in August 23 SummerSlam, Look, and then again the in an ambulance Ooh, match at September 27th's Clash of Champions. I didn't know that, that's awesome. The third bout between the two would end far differently, however, as at October 25th's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, mm, the Randy. Viper would actually defeat the Scottish Warrior to become oh. the WWE Champion for the 10th okay. time in a moment that no shocked one. many. And the reason this was so shocking was that, up until then, Drew had seemed so dominating in presenting himself as the new face of the company that it seemed like madness to take yeah. the belt off of him. Yeah. So luckily, this error was rectified when, on the November 16th episode of Raw, he would regain his lost gold after beating See, like they one last to the time, fans. putting yeah. the feud to bed once and for all from there, and allowing Poor him Randy. to head into the new year, Just focusing the title his attention then gave on it other away. challengers. And these challengers would include the likes of AJ Styles, Keith Lee, and Goldberg, all of whom the champion would send packing in quick succession. One person he wouldn't be able to beat, however, was The Miz, um, as after really? the perennial heel cashed in his Money in the Bank oh, contract okay. at the February 21st Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, like, yeah. he'd be able to steal the WWE title yeah, away, a steal. That's the only Drew way. <laughs> with no gold around his waist for the first time in Shiza. months. So picking himself back up again after that, he'd set his sights on regaining the belt at WrestleMania 37, mm. where this time, in front of a live crowd for the first time in over a Yay! year, he get to challenge then-champion Bobby Lashley. But while it may have seemed like the obvious choice hard. to have Drew win this one, in the end, mm. the company would choose to stick with Lashley, leaving the fan favorite on the losing end oh, no. come the close of the bout. And following that, he would he fail to defeat the Almighty during the rematches at both WrestleMania Backlash and Hell in a Cell, with the latter defeat meaning that, as per the pre-match stipulation, the Scottish Warrior could no longer challenge for the title as long as Lashley held it. So moving yeah. on to new things then, he'd start a feud with his old 3MB partner Jinder Mahal leading into that oh. year's SummerSlam. 
Then after winning that one, he'd start programs with the likes of Damien Priest and his old friend Sheamus in the months hey, following. Where Still, they it felt very much like, by that point, Play the former more. WWE <laughs> champion was above this kind of stuff. And given that he had everything the company could want from a top star, it should only be a matter of time until he regained the WWE ah. title. But while this hasn't happened yet, following his defeat Ooh. of Happy Corbin Could've at WrestleMania not, no. 38, it looks like he's finally he ready no to title. start moving up the card again. And with WWE just recently having announced a big upcoming pay-per-view show in Wales later in 2022, yeah, it this already like happened, right? To rechristen him as a top star in the company. Yeah, what happened there? Will that happen? Because this video is one year we'll ago. Just have to wait and see. In the oh. meantime, though, you can be sure that whenever he hits the ring, whether it's wielding a claymore or fighting Let's with his fists, comments, Drew McIntyre will live up to his Scottish heritage by proving he's one of the toughest performers out there, and one who, whenever he's given the chance, can outfight anyone. Ooh. Well, guys, what did you that think That was of the an video? amazing video. Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget. Thank you so much for sharing, Andy. Um, let me see if there is anybody who knew what happened with that one. If not, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, this man left WWE, hit the gym, completely reinvented himself, and came back to the same company that fired him to prove all the data is wrong. Nothing but respect for him. This is exactly what happens. Like, yeah, I hate the fact that they threw him out. Like, they had a genuine reason. Like, it, the way he, like, assaulted his 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 uh, wife or whatever there happened, like, between them. That's really bad. Don't support that at all. And I think it should be an end to end a career. Like, a matter to end someone's career. But at the same time, the way he proved himself further on and changed as a person and continued to improve, that is respect. Uh, him and Cody going from tag champs to being really least and rebuilding their image outside of WWE and coming back as top stars is amazing yeah and they have like similar history as well that's why I feel like Cody versus Drew would not be a thing I see them more as friends and backing each other and like going for different type of championship at least that's for now my opinion that's it guys I don't know if he won or not I don't think he has any titles today but maybe he had like last year when I didn't know a lot but that is it thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more and see you tomorrow with a brand new video make sure to check out more wwe content on my patreon patreon.com slash support bunny and thanks so much if you are already on patreon and supporting me i love you so much and also if you want more live reactions i have a bunny Moon tv channel on youtube and i also stream on twitch twitch.tv slash bunny Moon tv so if you are interested in chit chatting about wwe come join my streams if you're interested in other type of live reactions check out my other channel and if you're interested in more wwe check out my patreon See you guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye!